So Tyler, one of the reasons you and I love this industry is because it creates entrepreneurs and franchising is on fire. I mean, the statistics show that there's a new franchise opening every eight minutes of every business day in America, right? It's nuts. It's cool. I love this industry. It's one of my favorite things to be a part of. But with that, there's a thing that people don't want to talk about, and that is why franchises fail. So let's talk today a little bit about the top reasons that a franchise would fail. tough conversation to have, man, because I've had this conversation with people that I've worked with you. And like, I've had this conversation with friends who didn't work with me, who bought something. In fact, this morning I was responding to somebody who bought a franchise and I'll tell you, it comes back to this. They buy the wrong franchise. That's what it comes back. It's a very simple concept. They buy the wrong franchise. Now that's a different discussion we're going to get into because there's a lot of things you can go down rabbit holes, but they buy the wrong franchise. That's what it starts with ultimately. Yep. Agreed. You know, and it's, it's, what does that mean? Right. People are like, well, how do I know? How do I know which one's the right or the wrong franchise? Which of course, that's why just like you would usually wouldn't buy a home without a real estate agent. You know, we believe you wouldn't buy a franchise without an, a franchise advisor. So it starts there, but let's just talk a few things about what can we do? How can we identify what is the wrong franchise? And what I like to start with, it's the why and the what, right? Why am I doing this? Am I doing it to get away from a job? What am I running to or running from? I say that often, right? Am I doing it to run away from a job or am I doing it to run towards time with my family? Am I doing it to run away from worrying about what my future is going to be? Or am I doing it to run towards having the ability to work, uh, coach kids or work with a certain type of audience, right? And then my, what, what can I afford? What can I do? What, what can I, uh, feel good about, you know, all the things that you have to define before you get into it. And I could go through a laundry list of things right now about why's people's why's and people's what's, but ultimately somebody has to sit down on their own and say, why am I doing it? And what do I need out of this franchise? Yeah. We call it knowing your reality, right? Like know your reality, like be honest with yourself, be honest with your family, your significant other, like they're all going to be involved. So it's easy to see this cool franchise concept. You're excited about your travel with your family. You're like, I like this concept my town enter your town here could use this concept and then you just go down the path and all of a sudden you buy a franchise you didn't compare with another franchise you had no assistance buying it and you weren't real with yourself you know yeah. you just didn't understand why you were doing it so that is a fantastic and it's our number one in this list yeah which honestly leads to number two because it is so often people will make compromises on their why and their what when they look at one individual franchise. So here's what I mean, right? You work out at a fitness concept, you eat at a restaurant, you had a great service done by a home service brand. And you're like, I think I could do that, right? I would want to be a part of that. So you start looking at that one specific franchise concept with your why and your what defined. But when you're only looking at one franchise, like if you were only looking at one house, you're not going to find the color that you like on the house. Uh, if you look at one, you're not going to find the perfect layout, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms. And you start to say, well, I'm only looking at one. Maybe I can make it work. Yep. Same is true of a franchise, right? Maybe you say, I don't want to get into significant debt in a franchise, but you, you start to dig into what it costs to open the fitness concept that you love. And it would require debt. And you're like, you know what? That's okay. That's no longer one of my criteria and on and on. So it's so important that you look at multiple opportunities and not fall in love with just one and start to make compromises on the things that are important to you and running a franchise. Go back to the house concept. Like I love this. This is the best scenario. Imagine only looking at one house. You don't have anybody to represent you, but that seller's agent, he's just selling, he's just telling you all the good stuff about that. And you leave there with your mom, your, whatever, your wife, your kids, whoever, you're like, that was awesome. Like that house had this and this and this and this, but like you just got sold that house. There, there's no comparison at all, a side by side. So just imagine last time you made any big purchase, even a car, you have one car on the lot, you're staring at that car, you've got power windows, it's got navigation, all that stuff. Of course you're going to fall in love with it. I mean, that's the worst scenario. So right. that's number two. So Tyler, that is a perfect lead in to number three. And I believe the number three mistake people make in buying a fa or in, in owning a failing franchise is not facing the brutal facts, right? You're going to go through a discovery process. You're going to hear all kinds of things that confirm and contrast what is important to you. But when you hear those things that kind of get, you know, you know, get you to perk up a little bit, like, wait a minute, I needed to make a certain amount of money. And this person's telling me they didn't because of this reason, or wait a minute, I need to be open within six months, but uh, this person's telling me that it took longer, right? Listen to those 
dig in, understand why, and then face the brutal facts. There is a chance that if somebody tells you it took them a year to open their location because real estate wasn't available, that's potentially gonna be your reality. So look into it first. When there's a chance that if somebody tells you they didn't make the amount of money, that could be your reality. What does that look like for you? Yeah, just keep asking why. Like if somebody says something on validation, say why. If they answer with something that's not clear, say why. Like you just keep doing it until you get to the bottom of it. Like that's how you face those really brutal facts. Just keep asking why over and over until you're like, there's a problem here. If you hear this from three or four people on validation and you keep asking why and they keep giving you different answers, there's a problem. That's a brutal fact you need to address. So just keep asking until you get to the bottom of this. 100%. So Tyler, what's number four? Trust, but very verify. I mean, I can go on forever about this because you're getting sold. Like, let's just be honest here. You're getting sold. So going back to the car analogy, you're buying this car. They're going to tell you all that good stuff about this car over and over and over again. But you need to go home and research. Is this a five-star crash rating? Is this blah, blah, blah? Like verify. So they're going to tell you they have the best technology. They have the best marketing. They have unsophisticated competition. Go verify and go to the great links by doing it. If you need to have that service done on your house or you need to go seek your shop or whatever, do the fitness concept, do it and have your friends and family do it. Like, don't be afraid to get people in your circle involved in this process. Yeah, you got it. And and we build resources to help people do that, right? So if it's trying to assess how long your cash is gonna last and when you might cash flow, right? We have something that will help you figure that out. If it's competition, if, uh, how, do, how do we determine what the competition in our market is like? We have something that will help you do that. The right validation questions to ask, right? Resources. So there's certain ways to go about verifying the things that you heard. But the point I want to make is eventually when you're done verifying what, the, what they've told you, you got to make a decision. I mean, I go back to my very first franchise I ever owned. It was in Fremont, Nebraska, a small town that had the second largest YMCA in the country into it, right? I'm young. I think I was 25 years old. I'm opening my first franchise. I'm scared to death. Is it going to work? And I'm going up against Goliath. Right. I mean, the second largest franchise in the in, in the country that just put in a brand new fitness center. But here's what Anytime Fitness told me. They said there is a major segment of that population that wants a 24 hour come and go as I please do it on my own. So I just had to trust. There was really no way to verify because there was nothing else in the market at the time. I just had to trust. I opened up under that premise. I really advertised hard that concept of 24 hours and it worked. Right. So eventually when you do all your research, research, you got to just rip the bandaid and make a decision. You trusted, but you verified. That's the entire point of this whole thing. It's just trust what they're saying, but then go verify. Maybe you don't trust. I mean, that's the other side of it. Maybe you don't actually trust what they're telling you. Another discussion to be had. You probably shouldn't partner with that franchise concept, but always just verify what they're telling you over and over and over again. 100%. And, uh, you know, there's this little one page exercise that I've often uh, coached people to use. It's simple. I'm just going to say it real quick. So get out a piece of paper right before you start the discovery process. Get out a piece of paper on the very top right. My why, whatever is the reason you're doing this right below that. What I need. Is it money? Is it time? Is it working with a certain audience? Whatever your thing is, what I need on the left hand side, you're going to put why on top. And you're going to have two boxes below it. The things that confirm your why and the things that contrast your why on the right hand side what things that confirm your what contrast your what then before you're done everything that confirms either your why or your what i want you to put a check mark next to it when you have verified it those things are actually there on the what that contrasts it i want you to scratch a line through it once you've researched it and you said that won't apply to me or i can do something to overcome that that's it one page why what confirm contrast and done we don't need to get into this overthinking of everything just make it simple i love it here's my curveball for you ryan you don't know what's coming how does passion play into this, right? Like if you think about why you're choosing a franchise concept, a lot of times passion is at the forefront, right? You wanna be passionate about the service, the product, the concept. How important is that? So it's interesting. I think if this is your first business, making sure you're in an industry that's gonna support or in a business that's gonna support your family, that's first, right? You gotta make sure that if I need to make money to put my kids to college and pay the, pay the mortgage, that's number one. But I will tell you when passion is involved, it, it, it's an accelerator, it's an amplifier. I mean, I look at this, I look at Franchise Sidekick. I love helping people become business owners. It's the, my passion in life. Everything I do, of course, needs to have a scoreboard. We all wanna make money, we all like making money. But if I can do it by helping people become entrepreneurs through franchising, it's all I think about. 
right? Like I can't even engage in other conversations at times because I'm thinking, what's the next way we can help somebody do this better? So when you can combine the two, finance is first, but when you can combine the two, in my mind, it is an accelerator to make that thing just amazing. I agree. And I'll tell you this thing too, you don't have to be passionate about the product or the widget or the concept, but you have to be passionate about something about your business, right? So I've got clients who say, I just want to help my community. I want to provide jobs. I want to help my employees get better. I want to give them a path. That's what they're passionate about. They don't really care what they're doing, but that's what they're passionate about. So keep that in mind as well. You don't have to be passionate about the widget or you're selling, but you have to be passionate about something about that business that gives you that fire every single day. So Tyler, today we talked about risk, right? The whole thing was about risk. We love franchising, but there is an element of risk involved. And that is our core mission is to help people reduce their risk when buying a franchise. So if somebody's interested in buying a franchise, we'd encourage you to reach out to one of our advisors, schedule a 10 minute call. It could change your life.